story of Jesus feeding the crowd is the only miracle account that appears in all four Gospels. Early Christians obviously considered this an important story, one that could not be left out of any account of our faith. The reason is plain to see when we look at what Jesus does. He takes bread, gives thanks, and shares it with the people who then eat it. Those are the four hallmark gestures of the Eucharist, taking, blessing, breaking, and sharing. The story teaches us that the Eucharist is real food for those who follow Christ, and that there's no limit to its ability to feed us or to the number of people for whom it is meant. Jesus is, of course, the center of the story. But I once saw a children's book that gave a big place to the boy who had the loaves and the fish. In fact, he never actually appears. Andrew talks about him, and that's all. There are two other people in today's account whom it would be easy to overlook. Yet I think they provide an opportunity to put myself into the story in a way that Jesus and the boy do not. I'm not a miracle worker. I do not often have exactly what is needed like the boy. Granted, I have needs like the crowd, but I can't identify with a crowd. Philip and Andrew, though, fit me. Philip is in an uncomfortable position. Jesus looks at him and says, in effect, we have an impossible situation here. What are you going to do about it? Philip has been a follower of Jesus from the start. He's come to look to Jesus for leadership and for signs of God's power. It must have been a shock then to have the Lord turn to him for a solution, asking, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Philip gives the answer most of us would give. Not even with 200 days wages could we buy loaves enough to give each of them a mouthful. He sees the size of the problem, recognizes his small abilities, does an analysis of the situation, and decides that nothing can be done. Very smart, very prudent. Philip and I have a lot in common. I too try to be smart. I look around at my world and evaluate the problems and situations I see. I hear the Lord saying, we have an impossible situation here. What are you going to do about it? I look at my own abilities and weaknesses, count up the number of hours in a day, think it over and answer as Philip, no can do. Very smart, very prudent. But there's Andrew to look at as well. Andrew has looked at the same situation. He knows the size of the problem. However, rather than admit defeat, he looks for what can be done. So he comes to Jesus and says, there's a lad here who has five barley loaves and a couple of dried fish. But what good is that for so many? He knows that nothing much can be done, but he is at least on the lookout, keeping his eyes open for anything that might alleviate the situation. Andrew doesn't offer much, but it is enough for the Lord to work a miracle. He did what little he could, and everyone ate. There are times when I'm like Andrew. There's not much I can do, but I can do something. I can remain sensitive to the world's needs and alert to all that might answer those needs. The Eucharist is the miracle in which Christ takes the work of human hands and presents it to the Father as himself. Our own little bit, our own willingness to search out what we can do becomes part of that. God is looking for the Andrew in each of us.